Welcome back to the Earth Science Classroom, the channel that gives you everything to do with Earth science and more. So we're in plate tectonics, looking at divergent plate boundaries and divergence, where the plates split apart. And this video is looking at the ridge, the rise, and the rift, in particular the rift valley. The differences, the characteristics, the features, both on land and in the ocean, and examples, and explain to you what the difference is and how they work in the big system. All right. All right, so let's first look at the ridge and the rise, okay? Now, these two are both oceanic, both found as a bathymetric feature, which means they are found on the ocean floor and they're part of the ocean crust. So, yeah ocean crustal feature and to do with plate boundaries so again you've got the two plates meeting or two plates involved all right they're both divergent so the plates are spreading away so they're doing this and it's a spreading center so what is the difference well the best way to do it is to draw it okay so let's draw a ridge do it over here so a ridge, all right? So looking at the ridge that was found by Hess initially by sonar in 1962 and found in both the Pacific and the Atlantic, right? As well as other undersea features. So if we, that, if we have our ocean floor, the ridge would come up pretty quickly and there's the little gap and then come down and be the same, so same on that side, on both sides. But you have this steeper, steeper, more pronounced, higher, so it's higher elevation off the ocean floor, uh, still about 2,000 meters below the, the ocean surface, so still way hidden, um, also in the aphotic zones so in the dark region, so the sunlight doesn't get down there, so pretty much uh, hidden from sight, unless you have sonar. Um, and this ridge is steeper and a higher elevation, well, higher um, distance off the ocean floor. Okay, so um, that's the ridge, right? So it's a steeper, more pronounced um, feature, right? And of course, we have with both the ridge and the rise, you have obviously the uh, asthenosphere coming up as a bulge and or uplift. Or rising and you have the lava coming through and creating the basaltic rock so that's the ridge okay now rise is simply the same thing however it's more gentle so you have this more gentle wider more broader kind of so more like a stratovolcano in times in in, in case of in terms of the steepness and the and the height and, the, and it's not very wide Whereas the rise is like the shield volcano that's very, very wide and, you know, can be very high, but still is a gentle slope. So the slope has less gradient, so it's more gentle. It's definitely broader or wider and still has that asthenosphere bulge and up comes the, the magma, convection currents, lava. Um, so you have that uplift. So you have a more gentle um, slope and it's much, much wider. So that's the difference between the ridge and the rise. So I'm going to keep this here. Now, what about the rift? Now, rift infers the rift valley. Now, you do get undersea valleys, but this one is going to be continental. So this is basically part of the Wilson cycle, or mentioned prominently in Wilson's cycle, as you have this this central or this, this singular mass of continent crust and you know over the four main stages of the wilson cycle that was promoted in 1966 that you know the upwelling rising uplift of the magma would push up the the uh the crust and start to push it either side start to weaken the crust deform the crust and because it's brittle, it would break and you would get a basically a divide, a, a fracture, 
zone where the lava would come up and you would start to have spreading. So this rift valley is pretty much the juvenile stage whereby the continental crust has been split, fractured, broken into two, and now is being slowly moved and spread okay, and drifted um, away from the spreading center. And what happens is once it goes up and spreads, it starts to fall down and form gravens or gravens um, and a very uh, large depression and basin. And that would eventually maybe uh, for, uh, fill up with water and start a very fledgling ocean. So we have this in the African Rift Valley, okay, or well, East African Rift Valley. So Rift Valley, all right, and also with the Red Sea. There we are, Red Sea, and also the Triple Junction as well, which is there. So this is a perfect example of this Rift Valley. However, there are multiple other Rift Valleys around the world uh, that we have to include. So we've got the Rio Grande Antarctic Rift Valley and the Baikal or Baikal uh, Rift Valley. Now this one's kind of cool because it's right under uh, Lake Baikal, obviously. And this is cool because it makes it the, the deepest lake in the world. Uh, around nearly a mile deep, so it's around 5,300 feet down. Um, so that's an extremely deep lake. And uh, yes, that's basically one of the reasons why it's a rift valley. So it's in, yeah, in theory getting deeper and deeper and deeper uh, to a point where it levels off and then the, the lake starts to increase in size into a small uh, ocean. Um, so Rio Grande in the southwest, Mer southwest of America and in Tartic Rift Valley as well. So these will all be discussed in different videos. Uh, also with most famous with the African Rift Valley. Um, but basically these are the three types. All right, so on our global map, which I've done a video on that as well, um, you've got the connected uh, tectonics, whereby you have the, the divergent plate boundary, the constructed plate boundary that's making new plates um, in mostly ocean, uh, ocean crust around the world, with obviously the Rift Valley being continental. So there's only a certain or few areas where the Rift Valley uh, occur on land. The rest, the rise, and the ridge is majority under the oceans. Now, the rise was found by Wiseman and Ove in 53. And what they found was that the rise is a lot faster. So the rise um, creates the plates and moves the plates a lot faster. This could be because of the angle or the slope that the rise is currently uh, at in terms of it being very gentle slope, so it's easier to move, but the ridge that is more um, uh, more of an inclined uh, slope, inclined angle, that could also um, affect it or also could just be the speed of the convection currents under that part of the ridge, uh, under the rise, sorry. so. All you have here are these connected undersea mountains, undersea volcanoes. Now, the majority of the ocean, majority of the ocean is rich. So, Mid Atlantic, Indian, um, Pacific, Antarctic, uh, all different areas of the Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean, all are ridges. Whereas the only rise, located is the East Pacific Rise. Now, this is curious because this part of the Pacific Ocean is obviously moving the plate in a northwest direction. So, in that regards, it's moving the plate right across the ocean, or the ocean's going over the plate, right over the uh, Pacific Ocean, and it is causing the convergent plate boundary, which is ocean to continental, uh, with the Eurasian, the North American, and the Indo-Australian. So this is pretty much, 
pretty much uh, put in terms of the westerly direction, uh, the main part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. So this is the, the origin or where the starting point of this amazing Ring of Fire. And on the eastern side with the Nazca plate, moving towards South America, okay, you also had the convergence and subduction, and then you've got the Ring of Fire carrying on in South America down through Chile. So this is really the, um, you know, fascinating because it's moving between 11 to 18 centimeters per year in certain areas. So that is really pushing the plate uh, across. And as the plate gets older, it gets thicker and more dense and slows down, but still it is causing all of the conversion and all the ring of fire um, when it uh, collides with other continents. So let's discuss how it looks. So what you have is a, what you've drawn on a world map is this long continuous line, all right, where you have the divergence. So you'd have this very basic, you know, spread and center with the arrows denoting uh, relative motion away from the, the boundary, okay? That's fine. But what it really looks like is this. What it really looks like is this. So it actually looks like this, where it's like a zigzag zigzag effect whereby this is not just one straight line that's continuous it is a line that is divided into part divergent part transform so you have transform boundaries remember they are the ones that slide past each other that are opposite transform plate boundaries that are neither constructive or destructive but they are just basically in between at certain areas along the line of divergent plate boundary. So the green, the green line would denote transform plate boundaries. So you have here the black line showing divergence, relative motion away from the spread center. And then you'd have, as you can see, this you know, moves at different speeds. And because you have solid crust that's brittle, and you have this, this movement and friction and physics, not the whole plate. So the whole plate, because also you're in a three-dimensional sphere, which is the Earth, the whole plate is going to be broken into these slices. And they'll move at different speeds. And in between the slices, in between the, the sides of these, um, of these plates, you would have these transform plate boundaries. And the plate would be going in the same direction. You'd have each section, like, like slices, like thin sections, would move at different speeds and velocities, thus creating this zigzag effect and having the transform plate boundaries kind of nestled in between. Now, these dashed lines that I've drawn are fracture zones. They are areas where the plate has been you know, split, broken into these slices as they're moving away from the spread center at different speeds. And you get these fracture zones that can extend along for thousands of miles, especially in the Pacific Ocean. And that is what it looks like really up, up close. An East Co West Coast image of the uh, North American continent, North American continent plate, uh, Pacific plate on the left here, and also US, Canada, Mexico, and you have these lines, these lines going to um, some horizontal, some diagonal around, and we actually have to make it even thicker. Um, let me just see, this line right here, this line right here. All right, going down through the west coast of America, down into Mexico, and into the Gulf of Mexico. That is our San Andreas Fault Line, about 800 miles, going from the Salton Sea pretty much here all the way up through to Northern California. And it juts out into the Pacific Ocean, into the Mendocino Fracture Zone. Okay, here we have the Murray Fracture Zone, or FC for short, and here we have the Molokai uh, again, fracture zones. So these three main pressure zones are 
where the Pacific plate is moving in this direction, northwesterly direction, relative motion, and they are kind of like splitting the uh, the plates are split. So these pressure zones are showing you where they're split and how the plate is moving and different slices, different speeds. And in between, you have these transform plate boundaries, uh, which would be here. Uh, right, I'll use a color pearl right here. Okay. In between, they separate the divergent plate boundaries. So here we have a very large transform plate boundary. Okay. And then down here in the Gulf of Mexico, all right, we have a lot of different and very small um, spreading centers. which make up mostly um, the last part of the East Pacific rise, which again is one that only rises planets and that extends down through uh, the Pacific down into South America or alongside South America and then juts out towards uh, Australia. So here we have the Baja Peninsula, California Peninsula and uh, some states uh, of parts of mexico and then as before it goes off and goes off up here um into a factor zone but also you have here is our lovely juan de fuca plate and juan de fuca ridge and then you see here this this dark line with the little teeth that's showing you subduction and convergence and the teeth are showing the direction of which which plate is subducting under there. So in this term, in this case, the oceanic Juan de Fuca plate, which is a minor plate, only about 125,000 square kilometers, that is subducting under the much larger, lighter, more buoyant North American plate, mostly made of granite. So these fracture zones are in between the, the, the ridges, the, the divergent plate boundary, and also have the convergence there and, and the plates there small minor plate and the larger Pacific plate. And you'll see that these zones extend out basically towards Hawaii, towards the center of the Pacific Ocean. And they are very, very large, but they show you that even though it's one massive plate, Pacific is broken into smaller pieces because of the different movements, velocities, and convection currents and densities of the plate. All right, so guys, I hope this you enjoyed uh, this video. It helped out the um, difference between uh, the rise and the ridge and of course the rift valley which we will get into in more detail with different examples and we'll look into how the ridge and the rise lead into convergent plate boundaries and subduction and the ring of fire and different areas around the world all right thanks for listening guys